So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you exactly how I learned how to sell over $500,000 worth of final expense over the phone. Now, instead of selling this course, I wanted to go ahead and give this full course start to finish away for you guys for free. I've invested over 20 hours in this sales course and I just wanna help you become more successful in this industry. I'm going to be sharing with you the exact frameworks, the exact objection handling, everything and my exact script on how I've learned to sell final expense over the phone and also teach other agents how to become successful by selling final expense over the phone. I thought about every scenario that has made me successful and I want to go ahead and give this away for you for free in this course. You can even wait to the end of this video. I'm going to give you the exact script that has changed my life for free for you guys and you're going to see there's no links, there's no signups, there's no courses I'm going to sell for this. I just wanted to give you a resource to help you succeed and hopefully help your family become more successful. And I want to share with you guys that I have invested this time to hopefully help you change your future and ultimately if there's anything I can do for you, I hope this course will change your life because learning sales has completely changed my life and here is everything that I've invested, everything that I've learned and if I had to go out there and sell a course, this is the course that I would have made and I'm going to give it to you guys for completely free. So after this video, if you thought it was valuable, leave a comment, leave a like, and I hope this video will teach you everything on how to master selling life insurance over the phone. Let's get it. So in this video, I'm going to share with you everything that you guys need to know about selling final expense. I'm going to share with you and give you my free script. So make sure you wait to the end and I'm going to give you everything that you need to know to master the objection and ultimately become the best final expense sales individual that you could ever become. So first thing I want to jump into is, um, the reason that you're not making money that you desire is because you are lacking the skills to acquire. For example, um, if you are not making the money, if you look at your bank account right now, it's probably because you don't have the skills that you've desire to have. The marketplace will reward you. And the purpose of this training is to share with you how to solve this problem. And ultimately, I've learned that if I can just go ahead and learn how to sell, that I'll never have to worry about money. And the great thing about you here is I'm going to share with you how with a Wi-Fi connection, your cell phone, and ultimately some leads that you'll never have to worry about money ever again. And in the end, I'm going to share with you and give you guys my full script and to share with you the script that I trained my team on, the script that has uh, I've rocked with over eight months, word for word, step by step, and I really want to make this the most valuable video that you could find in this marketplace. So I'm going to be giving you all the lessons that I've learned. That's me in the bottom right is when I moved here into Arizona, um, but I'm going to give you everything that's helped me sell 40 plus 50 policies per month, step by step with this exact script and all the frameworks. And I've just been wanting to lead from the front and be someone who was in the game with you guys. And I'm going to share with you that I was as broken. I was as bad. I was... Um, as clueless as you, and I've put all these things together daily, I failed a ton, and I wanna share with you all those failures in this video, and ultimately help you master the learning curve to become more successful in this in this industry here. Just to give you some real results, because I think results are the most important. Um, I'm not here just trying to tell you guys I, I can you know, randomly sell final expense. The results are true here. Here's my February tracking sheet. Um, I sold 42 policies, I did 30, uh, 43 applications, in February, March, again, here at the bottom, I did 42 sales. This is me dialing the phone, um, calling the leads and doing the work every month for month after month. And then also in May, I had 43 sales too. And that's what I'm sure that if you guys can learn what I'm about to share with you, you're going to have these same results and you're going to become successful in this industry. Um, results are really important to me. Um, I want to be a person of integrity and also lead by example. Um, in October, when I was selling old leads and I wasn't generating leads or I was calling three month, four month, five month old leads, I still had the ability to sell. And the thing is, once you learn how to sell, which I'm going to teach you here, they can't take that away from you. And it's going to become an asset in your life, which is going to print money for you. And that's ultimately the goal of this video. Um, in October, I submitted over $55,000 worth of premium, as you can see here. And um, I work with one of the uh, one of the largest lead vendors in the United States called Smart Financial. And this is from their account manager. I had a 5% closing ratio. I sold 103 policies in two months and I had a, I was a top 1% agent in the whole United States selling and I'm going to be sharing with you guys everything that you need to know um, and basically closing, having a closing ratio of two to 5% off of used old leads and just give you everything that I've learned here in this video. Um, what will happen if you take this advice? Um, your life will probably change and ultimately you're going to learn how to have this skill that's going to change your life. And just to give you some examples, I'm not just saying that your life could change. I'm going to give you real evidence. I had an agent. Um, he never sold more than 12 policies ever in his life. And um, in June, which is last month, he sold 41 policies in the first 30, 30 days of this ever working. I trained him for about 14 days, gave him this exact training that you're about to take. 
and he sold over 41 policies. Agent number two, this month is July. She sold 50 policies with the frameworks and things that I'm gonna be sharing with you guys right now. So you're gonna have the same access that's gonna unlock and help you learn this deal. And she never sold more than three policies ever in her whole life. Before this sales training, I uh, took her from never selling three policies to selling 50 policies this month. This is her tracking sheet. And then a new agent, Josh, um, just another, um, another case here that we studied. Uh, he was licensed for over six months, never sold more than two policies in a single month. In his first days with us, in his first 10 days with training with me and selling, he sold 12 policies. And here's his tracking sheet. He sold 10 policies. In 10 days, he sold 12 policies. Um, this is us, his results. Um, in mid June. So really exciting that if you guys learn and really study, take notes here that you are going to be uh, reaping these benefits. So what I want to jump into here first is the difference between an A plus sales player and a C plus sales player is huge. Um, an A plus sales player will take someone from 40 policies to 50 policies while a C C, uh, a C plus sales individual, if that's you right now, take a real assessment on where you're at, is probably only selling five to 10 policies per month. Now, the gap is, 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 is astronomical. So what will take you from becoming an A to a C player is ultimately gonna be found in this video, but it's ultimately a skill set that you are missing. Uh, before we get started, I wanna share with you um, basically an assessment of yourself. What makes a bad agent? Now, you're gonna find out here if you're a bad agent, it doesn't matter what I tell you, there's some beliefs that you're gonna have to break here, but ultimately, what makes a bad agent? Now, there are bad agents out there. Number one, uh, what is your personal character traits like? Are you are you not trustworthy individual? Are you not confident? Are you unsure of yourself? Are you like, um, do you lack like humility in yourself? And ultimately, like when you think of yourself, what do you think yourself of? And I think if you lack the character traits of becoming successful or being that trustworthy individual, you'll struggle. Secondly, uh, a bad agent doesn't know anything about products. They don't know how to present or create a valuable offer for clients. Um, if you don't know how to pitch products, if you don't know what you're selling, then you're going to be a bad agent, no matter what type of training you take. And then ultimately, uh, there's there has to be some type of personal accountability. A bad agent has zero personal accountability. They have no work ethic. They have no systems in place. They have no tracking mechanisms. And ultimately, they lack an ethical standard to become successful in this industry. Now, ultimately, I want to share with you guys the ethics now everyone can sell 40 policies but can you do 40 policies the right way and this is what i'm going to teach you here um but you have to look inside right now who are you as a person what is your product knowledge who are you are if you're keeping yourself accountable if you can become successful or not um the way that you are going to bridge the gaps from being an a plus a c plus player to an a plus player or an you know a, like i say a five to an eight is by learning skills and skills are something that they can't take away from you and it's all by who you are. And I want to share with you guys the most important thing about sales is that you are the product. Now, I want you to know that no matter how good the offer is, no matter what you're selling, if they don't like you, if you can't sell yourself, you can never sell anybody else. So the question I want you to ask right now, quick assessment is, do they like you? If someone calls right now, would they like you? Secondly, do they trust you? Do you have good energy? Are you someone more like, damn, I really like this person? Like, okay, cool. We got a good vibe here. And then and lastly, fourth, do you sound like an expert? Where are the gaps? Do you think that you don't like, you know, you, you don't think you're very trustworthy? Is there some things in your personal life that you have to clean up? Second, thirdly, um, do you think you have bad energy? Like you're down, depressed, you sound like you hate your life. And then lastly, do you just not have enough product knowledge? Do you not sound like an expert when it comes to selling this product? If so, you are going to struggle. But ultimately, you are the product. You sell yourself. You sell your conviction. You sell who you are as a person. You sell a product, but the person that is buying from you, especially when it comes to life insurance, is buying you. They are trusting you with their family. They are trusting that you will protect them. They are trusting that they can come to you with all their problems. They are trusting that when they have a problem, that they can come to you with whatever it is. You are the product. And I want you guys to look at yourself right now and ask yourself if someone was to buy life insurance and you happen to pick up the phone and you were looking for life insurance and you pick up the phone and you happen to call your own cell phone and you picked up, would you want to buy life insurance from you? And if the answer is no, this trains for you. If the answer is yes, this is going to help you become more successful. So let's jump into it. Um, who is the person that you should become? And ultimately, here's how to become that person who is going to be more proficient at sales. There's a little front desk test that I like to talk that I like to talk through that's going to help change your perspective on who you should be as a salesman when you're selling life insurance over the phone. Many people think that you should be someone who sounds like they hate their job. You're boring. There's no energy there. Ultimately, I like to call it the front desk test. The front desk test. Have you ever called into, let's say, uh, like a massage spa or let's say a hotel? And instantly when, when you pick up the phone, you have a, 
you know, a lovely lady like Sarah or John, who just sounds so awesome, who sounds like they love their job, who sounds like they're just really sweet. Think of someone in your in your contact phone right now when you pick up the phone and you call them like, oh my gosh, I feel like I know this person instantly right off the bat. This is who the this is who you need to become. When you're becoming successful at sales, you are the product. Remember that. But ultimately, if you sound like you hate your job, that you're not confident and you don't have this love, warmth, energy, and care for an individual, it doesn't matter what I'm about to teach you teach you in this training, you will fail in this industry. And I want you to understand this. When someone when someone picks up the phone or if you're selling a product, can they like you and can you become someone that can be likable is the question I want you to ask yourself. Now, um, wh what I want to share with you is um, if you are not this person, none of this will matter. I really, really want to stress this. If you cannot become that person, if you're this person who hates people, who doesn't like talking to people, who's mad at the world, it doesn't matter how good your sales skills are. People will still not want to buy from you. Now, one of the bulks of this training is learning how to sell the problem versus the product. When it comes down to sales, I think one of the biggest mistakes that I've learned to change and one of the biggest mistakes that agents make that you're going to avoid is selling the product based on versus selling the problem. For example, many people will say, oh, this, this policy has the best benefits. This policy has the best riders. This is when this company was founded in 1905. They've been in business for all these years. This policy has the gold, like gold standard instead of selling versus the problem. What you're actually selling is not a policy, a piece of paper that has all these benefits. You're actually solving a problem and you're basically selling peace of mind. You're helping a client sleep better at night. You're selling respect for their family and you're selling security. So I want you to know that you are selling right now an invisible product. And when you can flip the script of learning about what benefits the product has and what it's going to do and how shiny the object is, Sell it based off what it's going to do for the perfect person that you're selling to. What is it going to solve? And if you can do that, if you can flip the script, I'm going to share with you exactly how to ask the right questions to become more successful. But when it comes down to peace of mind, and it's one of the hardest products to sell, you're selling something that it's insurance. Like people don't want to use it because they're going to die. And ultimately, when they when they do die, they don't even know if it's going to be used. For example, they don't know if the product's right. They don't know if their age is going to show up. There's this a lot of these question marks on the help you solve here to become a better sales individual. But ultimately, imagine buying something that you're never going to actually see. Pretty tricky. But if you sell it based off of the problem it solves, you'll become more successful in this industry. Now, I'm going to teach you how to get so good that people feel stupid not buying from you. I want you to learn that if you can get good with your words, you can get, the, get, get good with your the art of persuasion and communication, people will hang up the phone and they'd be like, oh my gosh, this person just sold me. I have no idea. I've been looking for this product for about eight, 12 months. What just went on? The goal of sales is to get so good, people feel stupid not buying from you. And here's how that happens. So it all comes down by asking the right questions. Questions that you're going to ask is going to real, reveal information. And the information that you get from your prospect is going to allow you to have leverage, allow you to have ammunition to eventually present them a product that's going to solve their problem. But I want you to write this down. The script that you're going to be seeing here is a question-based script. This is a question-based framework that is all about the prospect. The only thing that matters right now is the prospect, not the product. Remember that. So the way that you have to identify what the prospect is going through is by asking the right questions. Now, the first 30 seconds of any sales call, any sales pitch, or when someone picks up, is by far the most important. I'm going to share with you exactly how to get through this. Um, the goal of the first 30 seconds when someone picks up, when it's an outbound dial, when it's an appointment, is to confirm why you are speaking with this person. John just picked up his cell phone because a random person just called him, and he's trying to figure out why are you on the phone right now. The goal of the first 30 seconds of any phone call is to remember this. Identify why we are having this conversation. And here's a quick little tip to make this a lot easier for you to not get hung up on instantly is to sound like you actually love what you're doing. Sound loving, sound like you have a warm heart, sound friendly, sound nice, do whatever and say whatever and present yourself in a way to get their guard down as soon as possible. As soon as you can lower their guard, which I'm going to share with you here in a second, they are going to be more respect receptive to the things that you present them. And more, more importantly, they're going to be more comfortable sharing with you information, which will allow you to sell them. How do you do this? Let's jump directly into the script here. So here is my uh, my exact script for you. So let's say you call a new lead. Ultimately, your tonality is very important, but let's just go word for word here. So I just want to share with you here. So um, I'm going to say, hey, John. Hey, John, this is Peter. I'm just getting back to you here in regards to the request you sent. And it shows here you listed John John Jr. as the beneficiary. Is, is that correct? 
So I'm going to stop you there. What I want to show you guys is my tonality. When they pick up the phone, you want to make them sound like you know them and they're curious, like, what's going on here? Why are you calling me? So I'm not like, hey, John, this is Peter. I'm just getting back to you in regards to the request you sent in. No, boring. I'm like, hey, hey, John. And they're like, yeah, who's this? Hey, John, this is Peter. I'm just getting back to you here in regards to the request you sent in. Um, it shows here you listed um, your beneficiary as, as John Jr. Is that right? Hear that. Curiosity peaks interest. So um, he's like trying to figure out why am I calling? I'm like, yeah, what's going on? And I'm like, okay, the second question, you want to go confirm more information. So confirm why you're having this conversation. Okay, yeah, that's right. Okay, it shows here you listed your date of birth has 2-16 of 1966. Is that correct? Yeah. If he says no, confirm another piece of information. Or question number two when he says yes. Okay, and just curious, identify why you guys are having this conversation. Okay, great. Just curious, um, do you currently have some coverage in place or did you just kind of start shopping around? So you pick up the phone, you got his guard down, you've confirmed some piece of information, and ultimately you have confirmed why you guys are having this conversation right now about life insurance. Now what you want to do is understand what are they even looking for? This is about clearly identifying the value proposition. Now the way that you do this, the next question they have in the script here is um, if you don't have coverage, if John's like, no, I don't have coverage or I do have coverage, there's two different ways that you want to ask the next question. It's by finding the value. So if John's like, no, I don't have any coverage. Okay. And it shows here, or you're saying that you don't have any coverage in place. Were you just looking to leave something behind for like the family, John, or are you just trying to cover those burial expenses? He's going to tell you, I'm looking to lease something for the family, or I'm going to go ahead and cover the burial expenses. And then right there in the la in the first 30 seconds, you have a clear need for life insurance. There's a clear problem that he's experiencing, and this is why he's sold out a form. This is why he's looking for life insurance, and this is why he's looking for someone to help sell him because he now knows that you are a potential um, solution to his problem. Now, let's say John already has life insurance. John, it shows here you told me earlier that you already have some coverage in place. Now, were you looking to add on to what you currently have, or are you just trying to see if you can find something a bit more affordable for you? John's going to give you his situation. There is no sale without some type of value, and I'm going to share with you how to clearly identify where to find value. So when John says, you know, yeah, I already have some coverage. I'm looking to find something more affordable. Okay, you're going to try to find something cheaper. John, are you looking for more coverage? Are you, are you trying to add on to your coverage that you currently have? There are three ways that you can identify if someone already has coverage on how you can help them. Most people, if they have coverage, are trying to sell them something that they don't need and don't have any value for them. Instead of finding, hey, are we looking to replace the policy to find something cheaper? Are we going to find you more coverage? Do you feel like you're overpaying and not getting enough coverage? Do you feel like you need more coverage to add on? Or more importantly, do you feel like you don't have enough coverage to actually solve your problem? What's keeping you up at night? And that's what you do in the first 30 seconds. Now, in the first 30 seconds, you're going to get a, an influx of three common objections. Here's how to commonly handle these three main objections that you're going to get. Number one is I'm busy. Call me back. Number two is I can't afford it. I don't need it. I got it taken care of. There's so many people when you first pick up the phone, that's their first re reaction. There's that saying, if you walk into a store and even know that you're going into, let's say, Lululemon and you, you're looking for a new pair of shorts and the guy from Lululemon comes up to you and says, hey, uh, is there anything I can help you with? You're like, no, 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 I'm good. I don't need it. Smoke screen. The first 30 seconds when, when, when you ever offer help, people are easily to turn it down rather than ask, hey, like, um, how can I help you? Or is there something I can do for you in a, in a, in a, in a way that you're going to be receptive, which I'm going to share with you how to do that now. So the reason that people give you objections is because they lack information. And that is when the objection is created. They don't know who you are. They don't know what you're going to tell them. They don't know what's out there. There's all these question marks. And the more question marks you have, the more objections you're going to get. And here's how to handle these three objections that you get. So the first objection is, I can't talk right now. I'm busy. So if someone's ever you call them, I can't talk right now. I'm really busy. Perfect. That was the reason I was calling. It shows here you actually listed your date of birth as blank. Is that correct? It shows here that you listed your beneficiary as blank. Is that correct? It shows here you listed blank. Is that correct? So you first have to acknowledge the objection. Here's how to kill all initial objections. Acknowledge the objection. Agree with them in some way. And then ask the next question to either verify information or push them through the objection is how I like to handle it. So perfect. You know, John, I totally understand. Um, that was the reason I was calling. It shows here you listed, you're agreeing with them at the same time, and then you're asking the next question. The worst thing that you can do when it comes down to objection handling is to be like, oh, no worries, just push through it, just push through it, just push through it. No, people need to be heard. That lowers your guard. You agree with them, lowers your guard even more. And then you ask them the next question to get the information that you want. Same thing when someone says, 
Um, I, I can't afford it. You know, there's these people that are going to come by. They're just say, hey, just give me the price, people. What is the price? What is the price? Well, um, all right, I can't, aff- I can't afford it. Well, we haven't even talked about this. So when someone says I can't afford it, there's like nothing to even think about. You as a sales individual has to remove their guard and understand what's going on in the world. So I totally understand, John. I agree with them. Acknowledge. And, you know, I'm just not even sure if I can even help you here. Um, let me ask you, when you first filled this out, were you looking to leave something behind for like the family or are you just trying to cover the burial expenses? Again, framework, acknowledge, agree, and ask the next question. Oh, okay. I'm looking for something for the burial expenses. And then you can move forward. I can't afford it. Just give me the price. Well, John, I'm not even sure how I can help you. When you say give me the price, what do you want me to give you a price on? See how that makes sense? People will ask things because they expect something from a bad salesman just to shoot out a price to try to see if they can solve their problem. But you can't solve their problem fully. And you never want to sell someone if you don't have the information that you need from them. Now, third main objection has got it taken care of. Perfectly. Perfect. I figured that when I when I called you, you already had something in place. Were you just looking to add on to what you have or are you just trying to find something more affordable? I got that taken care of. It's just that smoke screen that you'll get from that Lululemon sales rep. I got it taken care of. No worries. I don't need help. Like I don't I don't want to go through all this headache because this guy's going to be – there's so much friction involved. There's so much pain. I don't want to do all this stuff. It's so much work. That's why people say I got it taken care of. Now, if, if someone said I got it taken care of and you can provide them a more valuable product, you can put them in a better position, and you can ultimately serve them and put their family in a better position, why would they not want to listen to you? And that's the question that you need to ask. And how do you get that information? And that's what I'm going to share with you right now. And the way that you get that information is by getting them to break down the walls, move forward, and ask questions to get information to get ammo against them to sell them a product. And I'm going to share with you exactly how to be a little sneaky snake to get this information. Um, so in part of the second sales on my, on my script, that script that is very, very important is what has helped change my personal ability to sell is becoming a medical expert. I'm going to share with you this. Becoming a medical expert is very, very important. Here's the exact medical questions that I ask. Um, it's going to be in my script. You can either screenshot this and you're going to have this access below. Um, but basically, it's height and weight, birthday, you know, COPD, lung disease, asthma. You're trying to get an analysis of what's going on in the world health-wise so you can present a solution to them and it's more information that you need. So first thing is, why are they here? How can I possibly help them? Get through the objections if there's any. And then let's go right into the medical underwriting. Uh, medical questions here, them continue directly from my script. You can screenshot them, whatever it is. Um, anxiety, depression, kidney. I'm trying to get the best medical analysis possible. Now, I want to give you guys really, really important tips. You want to get medications. You want to get the worst situations. And ultimately, medications are really, really important. I like to have everyone go ahead and get me their um, prescriptions or pill bottles so they can read to me and let me know what they're taking. Now, this is a separate acquired skill outside of selling. But the way that you can make it easier is by getting a free software called Insurance Toolkits. Um, for you here, it'll do all your medical underwriting for you. You just type in the health conditions there, and then you type in the medications, height, weight, birthday, and it's going to show you the best rates on the market and best products for the client based off their current health situation. This is an advantage. This is a secondary skill set that you need to learn, but it's going to be one thing that can help complement your skills to become an expert and help you actually sell more policies and become a more, um, you know, more literate sales individual. Um, so the goal of underwriting, what is underwriting? Underwriting is just finding the product for the client based off the medical analysis. The goal of underwriting is to find the best product based on their medical conditions. I'm going to share with you why this is so important. What does the best product even mean? Best product is the most valuable product. I'm going to show you what that means, how to create valuable products. And then secondly, I'm going to share with you a product that is going to be the most affordable. For example, the reason that you make sales here at the bottom is this value equation. If value is greater than price, it will create a sale. Let me explain this to you. If someone offered you a valuable Lamborghini for the price of $1,000, would you buy it? And it's going to be yes, because you value that Lamborghini more than $1,000, so you're going to make the sale. This is why I like to think of Chipotle, why they're such a successful business. The, The value of a Chipotle burrito of $10, $10, you get your meal, you get, you know, you get a great product, outweighs how much it costs. And that's why people buy. It. And the goal of sales to make sales easy and to make people feel dumb not buying from you is to create a value discrepancy. How can the value outweigh the price? That larger the gap, the larger the price, the value discrepancy, the more value it creates and creates the highly likelihood of becoming or making a sale. And the way that you do that is through the process of underwriting. The best product or creating that gap is finding a product, which I'm going to share with you here, that creates more value and also can be compared apples to apples to price that has a cheaper price. So buy a more valuable product and a, and a cheaper price will create that sale for you. So let me explain to you why your product is so important 
and how to find valuable products that will change your business, that will help you make sales and make no-brainer sales that require no sales ability. Number one, you want to find uh, what makes a valuable product is something without a waiting period. Imagine if you can find something from a two-year waiting period and help get someone day one coverage. That is valuable. Now this client no longer, Sandra does not have to wait two years for her life insurance to pay out. And she's going to have instant coverage day one that is more valuable for her for you. Secondly, price. If Sandra is price shopping and Sandra was sold a $10,000 policy for $79 and then she speaks to Peter and I sell her the same product, the same benefits, the same value and a better agent, the same price of $44, it's $33 cheaper. What do you think Shander's going to say if she's on a fixed income? Yes, I would love to save $33 every month continually for the rest of my life for the same product. Creates value. A uh, third equation in the product value, I like to say equation, is you. You as the agent are more valuable than you think. You know, let's say something is apples to apples, price to price. You have to sell yourself. I'd rather sell, buy a product from someone that I like, someone that I trust, someone that I you know really respect, and someone that I think is actually has my back and has a good heart. You are part of the product. And then lastly, um, a product that fits someone's medical conditions. So a product that um, can be there for them day one if they have COPD, a product that can help them if they have an amputation, a product that can help them find a, a better plan or additional benefits or uh, additional solutions if they have uh, a TIA or a stroke. These, these small variables create a viable product, and this is what creates that value to price discrepancy, what allows you to sell more policies and hit your targets here and make more money selling life insurance and become a better sales individual. Now, you want to learn to sell the best product for them, not you. Not you. Let me lower that there for you. Most people, I'm going to share with you this, will sell products based off commission rate, based off what's best for their pockets rather than what's best for the client. Now, become an expert underwriter, have multiple products or multiple carriers, which suits the client's medical needs. This is the biggest advantage I'm going to give you guys. This is what has helped me. This is what helped my agents is that we find products that suit clients that give them that bottom there medical one or medical issues. Day one coverage, very, very valuable. That solves their problem for billing issues. Day one coverage. And then third, find a product that can beat other people's prices. Apples to apples. Can you find a better apple? If you picked up two products and you compared them apples to apples, which one are you going to pick? Oh, I'm probably going to find the one that's cheaper. It's just common sense when you're selling to people on a fixed income. And the way that you do that is I believe, and I can firmly stand by this for the rest of my life, I will always sell multiple products because I think when you go out there and you buy a, you know, when a plumber comes over to your house, they're not just using, they're not just using one tool to fix your toilet. They have multiple different products based off the, the type of drain that you have, the type of um, plumbing that you have. This is why your product is a tool for you to become a better successful individual. And that's why it's very important to you. Now I want to break down after you become a medical expert or a medical underwriter, how can you start asking questions where with your product expertise and your ability to sell will become unstoppable in this industry. Now, after you built that medical portion, it's time to build credibility. Credibility is very important. This is a por portion of building trust. You're a stranger on the phone. How can I figure that you're here? How can I trust you? And you do that right here. So before we jump in this, John, I just it's just really important for me here to share with you to just let you know exactly who you're speaking with here today. So I just like to share with you some of my personal information. So first, my first and last name, I want you to write this down. It's Peter Roberts. I'm also going to give you my personal cell number. This is just my personal cell number. You can call me. You can text me anytime you need something. Just know that I'm always here for you and your family, okay? That number is 443-111-1111. Go ahead and save that in your phone. You need to share right here in this credibility section that you are there for the client, that you are who you say you are, that they can trust you, and ultimately that you're going to be there for, for their family for the rest of your life. You have to sell yourself. Now, in this here, the ways that you can do it and little tips that I've learned to go ahead and build some valuable trust in your um, over-the-phone sales process is to simply by sending a picture of a driver's license, sending a picture of your family, sending a picture of other clients. There's a client that I've helped, uh, Miss Deborah. I actually met her at a Denny's, and I send that to clients. And then even send a headshot of yourself, uh, a professional headshot. Um, saying that, hey, this is who I am. This is match my license and this mass matches the client pictures that I've just sent you. Just to build values and, and angles of trust is very, very important. If someone does not trust you, they're not going to give you their credit card information and you're going to get objections, which I'm going to share with you here in a second. Now, time to get the client to open up. The goal of this training is to really do this for you. Use your words to help people make a decision. People need help making decisions. Your, your goal here as a sales individual is not to help for someone to make a decision, it's to help them make a logical decision on how they are going to solve their problem. 
I like to use the analogy of this onion. I'm going to share with you how to peel back the onion and ultimately handle every situation to break down the client to get them to respond in a way that you want them to respond, to ultimately allow them to understand that they have a real problem, that you can present a solution to them to become a person who can sell them a life insurance policy. Now, ways to get up, ways to open up the client. Now, it's very important that you stay deep in your conversations. I want you to dive in, dive deep any time you can. For example, information is power. The more information that you have, the more power that you have. Let me explain how you get that. Uh, for example, if someone says very surface level answers, there are five breakdowns that I like to dive deeper with clients. So John, can you kind of fill me in when, when you say you don't want to leave this burden behind your family? Can you kind of fill me in? Or secondly, when John says, when you say, when you say that, what do you mean by that? John, when you say that you want to, don't want to pass a financial burden on to your son, what what do you mean by that? They're going to dive deeper. John, can you explain to me how or what that would look like if you passed away tomorrow? What would that what would that do for your son? John, you said that you want life insurance, but you know, why would it be important to have life insurance? And then lastly, John, when you say this, can you kind of walk me through what that would look like? So here's just three pre, I like to say pre-frame sentences that I like to use. When someone gives me an answer, I need to break them down and they haven't gave me enough information. I need to have them peel back the onion. Can you fill me in? When you say that, what do you mean by that? Explain to me, dive deeper. And then why would that be important to you? And ultimately, can you walk me through? Very, very powerful ways to open up your client. Now, here's how you do it. Here's how to peel back the onion. That's how we have an onion peeler right there is to ask good questions to get information. The better your questions, the more information that you will get and the more money that you will make. Guarantee it. So here's the discovery. So here's the bulk of the pitch. I'm going to share with you how we're going to break down clients and ultimately get them to expose themselves and ultimately reveal to them that they have a really big problem that they need to solve. So question one that I like to ask is okay, and John, back to you here. Kind of fill me in. What had you motivated to start? I guess looking around for some life insurance. Now, what's going to happen is the client's going to respond to you. He's going to say, "Oh, I want to cover my burial expenses. I'm going to leave money behind my family. It's about that time. Just looking around, my grandkids. Ah, just preparation. I don't have any coverage yet. I'm retired from my job. Whatever the situation is, the client is going to explain why. Now, if they give you a clear why, you simply summarize it back to them. Okay. So you just want to make sure that, you know, you have enough money to cover your bare expenses. Is that right? Make them feel heard. Very important. The more you listen and the more they feel heard, feel heard, the more receptive that they will be and the more willing they are to give up information. For example, if John's like, I want to leave money behind to my family because my son's in college and I don't want him to pay for his fifth year of tuition um, if he has a grants or some, some random, whatever it is. Okay. So it just sounds like you want to go ahead and make sure that your son has enough money for his college expenses. God forbid if something happens tomorrow, you don't want him having to pay for his tuition. Is that correct? You basically just summarize back to him. This illusion. It's called the mirroring effect. Mirroring effect is people like people who say things back to him that they have already said. The goal of this process of sales is to become a chameleon. What I want to share with you is what to do in the process of sales is to replicate your client. The way that they act, the way that they say things, their tonality. If they're really quiet on the phone, you be quiet. If they're really uplifting and really, really bold or really kind of straight to the point, then you're straight to the point. Ultimately, the goal is to make them feel heard. Now, lastly, if you ask John question one, read question one again, and he does not give you a valid answer. He doesn't actually share with you why he's looking for. He's like, I don't know. I'm just looking around. You now need the client to open up. And what I just shared with you earlier is how to get the client to open up. Here's two clear examples that I use in every sales script that I use. Okay, and kind of fill me in. When you say you're just looking, what do you mean by that? Okay, and kind of fill me in. Why would having something in place be important to you? Those questions open them up to understand why do we? Why are we on the phone right now and how can I help this person? Why are we even talking about life insurance? What is the root? You got to break them down. Second question that I ask right after... We've understand why we're why he's looking. There's a clear understanding of what's going on in their world. If they don't have life insurance, here's a question I ask. And the second question is really just to extract pain. Now you need to start painting the picture of what it's like if something happens to them because they don't have this product. Now, kind of fill me in, John, since you do not have any coverage in place, like what are you most concerned about? The client's going to respond in, with some type of pain. Oh, I don't want anybody paying for my burial expenses. Write this down. You have to dive deeper. You have to break them down. You have to peel the onion down. You have to understand what's going on in the world. Okay, gotcha. And, you know, God forbid, John, if something were to happen to you, like, and you didn't have the coverage in place, who would 
be responsible for paying for your burial expenses. This has the client now thinking what it's like if they don't ever get life insurance and they hang up the phone right now and they do not solve this problem. Now you need to go ahead and dive deeper. So the next question that I'll ask is, I'll just move myself up here at the top here. It's just a question I ask. God forbid if something happens to you, who would be responsible for paying for the burial expense? Who would that person be if you didn't make this decision, be responsible for those burial arrangements? <clears throat> question number two, John will give you a name. He'll say, oh, my son, Timmy, um, my nephew. Now you got to dive deeper. Paint that picture and go deep. Okay. And that's all done by asking hard questions. Okay, and would, you know, Jimmy, your son, be in a position where he could, you know, come out of pocket for ten to 15000 of those burial expenses? Now, listen to how I ask these questions. The questions that I are, I'm stating are not just questions to call them out. It's a questions of curiosity to get them to explain more information and make them feel more comfortable. Okay, and would, you know, John be in a position where he could come out of pocket for ten to $15,000 for your burial expenses? He's probably going to be like, no. Okay. So now you have to paint the picture, or I like to say pain the picture. How bad is this going to look for them? Okay. So what would that look for, for John? Would, would John be in a position where they have to like raise money, knock on doors, start a GoFundMe? Like what, what would, what would they have to do? Well, John's going to do this, this, and this. Now you're going to make them feel heard by simply summarizing back to them. Okay. So it sounds like, you know, it sounds like John as a father, you just don't want Jimmy going around with the bucket knocking on doors, raising money with a picture, selling uh, Tootsie Rolls with your name on them because you didn't make this decision. Is this about right? So sounds like, John, you summarize them, that you don't that you don't want your son having to pay for your burial expenses, X, Y, and Z. Is that about right? He's going to say yes. Now he's just revealed to you what the problem is, how he's not solved the solution, and ultimately, if he doesn't solve this problem, what's it going to look like for his son that he says he loves? Now, what have you ha what what have you done to try to solve this problem? This is very important here. I keep moving myself around, but so John, I want you guys to remember this. John has I'm going to share with you a little bit deeper. John has just explained to you why he needs the life insurance. Now, what you need to understand is like why hasn't he made a decision? And I'm going to share with you how you do that and ultimately what this means. So, it sounds it's pretty important to you, John. Have you been looking around for something like this for a while now? John's going to go ahead and explain his concerns. So his concerns are, yeah, I've been looking around, and I'm going to share with you what they are. Uh, I haven't been looking around or I just started. Cool. And have you just not been able to find anything comfortable and affordable for you? That is how you find what they have tried to do in the past is with this objection. Is you're going to solve or handle objections before they come up. Let me explain what that means. The goal of a sales individual is to basically handle all the objections before they arise. Okay. Um, and the way that you do that is John hasn't – John clearly – at the bottom here, why haven't you moved forward? You're trying to think in your mind, why hasn't this guy who has just vented to me has explained how bad his situation was? Just explain to me why he needs a life insurance. Has just explained to me and broken down his walls on why he needs the product. Why haven't you solved this problem, John? And the objections are going to come up that you're going to handle before they go into the application, that you're going to handle before you go ahead and present numbers. The last thing that you want to do is pitch someone a product without handling every single objection. Write that down. The purpose of selling is to get to the object of closing and basically explain away all their concerns before giving them the numbers. So, John, has it been too expensive? Were they giving you a two-year waiting period? Um, do not trust the agent? Has the company been screwing you over? Um, you can't just start the can you you can't start the policy today. What has prevented you from moving forward and solving this problem? This is very important. Now, you need to handle these objections because the way that you handle these objections will give you evidence on if you're going to sell this person. So, for example, <clears throat> when John says um, it's too expensive, you know the biggest objection he's going to give to you throughout the whole sales presentation is price. When John says um, he can't find anything without a two-year waiting period, his biggest objection throughout the whole sales process is finding him something without a waiting period. If you can do those things, he will probably buy, and here's how you ask the question, and here's how to use his words against him. So it sounds like, John... You value the life insurance. You just don't want to make sure, you know, you want to make sure that you don't have a two-year waiting period. Is that correct? So it sounds like you value the life insurance. You just want to make sure that you're not overpaying. Is that correct? So you are you want to make sure that something doesn't happen that you're worried about. That's been holding you back. Is that correct? Basically, if we avoid the previous pain of not making a decision, you would probably buy or solve this problem today. 
That's what you're summarizing back to him. So, John, basically, if we can avoid finding you something with a two-year waiting period, we can avoid finding you something that's overpriced. If we can avoid finding you a bad agent, you would probably go ahead and solve this problem because you know how important this is. Is that about right? Yes. Problem solved, and you can move on, and you can probably sell them. Now, are there any other problems? Now, you've just kind of really good understanding of where he's going, what it looks like, and ultimately paint the picture and what has prevented him from moving forward. Now you need to go ahead and see if there are any other problems that he's facing. Are there any other bills that he's worried about? For example, fourth question I ask is, are there any other bills, burial expenses, or anything like, or debts that you're worried about leaving behind to your family? So let's say you sell someone and you pitch them enough for a burial, a $10,000 or $15,000, and they never told you that they have a $20,000 loan left on their house and they don't move forward. And the reason that they didn't move forward is because they, you know, they want more coverage. What do you mean? You just want the burial expenses. No, you need to ask this question because you need to create a package or a solution to their overall problem, not just half the problem. The goal of sales is to solve their full problem, not partially their problem. And that's how you do it as you ask this question here. Are there any problems or any other situations that we need to be aware of or any other information that I need to collect so when I present you a product to solve this problem, the full problem is solved? Now, before you pitch the problem, I live by this in sales, and I think you guys need to as well. Um, you want to get as much information as possible. I stressed this before, but I'm going to stress it again. Get as much ammo as possible. The ammo is based off the questions that you get and the questions that you the questions that you ask will provide the ammo that you provide because ultimately the answer that you get from the questions that you ask will then be used against the product to sell them. For example, if John's like, you know, I don't want this to happen or I don't want this to happen or this is my biggest fear by asking him questions, you can then tell him, John, I remember when, remember when you told me this or John, remember when you said that you don't want this to happen or John, you remember said if, if something happened to you tomorrow that your grandson Jimmy is going to have to pay out of pocket for your barrel expenses, you don't want that to happen, right? So what's your biggest concern? And this is how you go ahead and present a solution or you go ahead and get the information that you need so that every objection that's thrown away can be handled. You have information and you do not want to move forward if you don't have all the information that you need to collect. Now, once you feel like you're strong, you have a strong case here, you have enough evidence on why you need this problem and how a decent solution, now you need to go ahead and begin solving the problem for the prospect. And the way that you do this is by finding out what their specific need is. So the way they ask us is question number five or seven. I like to ask, depending on what question you asked before this. Um, are you planning for a more formal burial or are you going to go the cremation route? Finding the right product for them is very important. If burial, okay, gotcha. So having like ten to 15000 to cover your burial expenses is all you're looking for. Is that correct? Or if it's a cremation, okay, so having anywhere from five to seven to cover your burial expenses is all you're looking for. So those are the packages I like to present. And then if someone's like, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, Peter, what product I want. I'm not sure. Okay, so it sounds like, John, whatever option you go with, you just want to make sure that the money is there to cover all your burial expenses. Is that what you're most concerned about? Yes. So you begin solving the problem. Now, you need to start preparing a solution. And the way that you do this is by packaging your product. You need to start explaining your product. So kind of fill me in here, John. Were you just looking for something where like the cost will never change, it'll be there for you for the rest of your life, and something where it's guaranteed to pay out to your loved ones? Is that all you're really looking for? Again, by preparing the solution, when they say yes to this, you know that they have a clear idea of what product they want, and ultimately that you are providing them you know, evidence or information to help them make a decision rather than you telling them what product they need. The goal is to have the prospect explain to you what they want, not what you want for the product, what, not what you want for the prospect. Ultimately, if you want to provide more value, here's a little sneaky trick that I like to throw in here that's very important for you. If you have a great product, you can add this in. And also, John, after you did the medical underwriting and you can see that you can find them a product without the two-year waiting period. Also, John, you probably also don't want anything with like that two-year waiting period. What that means, John, is that you probably don't want anything where it's going to make you wait two years for the benefits to pay out. You want something, if God forbid, something happens to you tomorrow, little Jimmy's going to get that full 10000 Is that what you're looking for? He's going to say yes. Now you've now created more and increased valuable product which is going to make the sale a lot easier. Now, here comes pitching the option. Now, pitching the option, you need to explain who they're going with and what company it is. And ultimately explain a little bit, small, small, small benefit um, breakdown of what company they're going with. Here's the benefit section compared to all the ask questions that you need to ask prior, prior to this to get the information. For example, here's how I pitch the options. Okay, well, I got some good news here for you. It shows that you should be eligible for the most affordable option statewide out of all 26 companies. And it's with a company called um, Prosperity. Have you have you heard of them before? Uh, yeah, no, or, or maybe, or I haven't. Okay, it doesn't matter what they say. 
Well, they've been in business since 1927. They haven't missed a payout claim in over 100 years. And they're just a rel- well-known and established company. They're also an A-rated company backed by the state, which means that they pay out their claims in 24 to 48 hours. They're also backed by the Better Business Bureau with an A-plus rating, okay? The goal of this is simple. Let them know that they're not going with a sketchy company, that this is a reputable company, and it's a company that's ultimately going to be there to pay their claim. Very important. Now, I also like to throw this little in here for you is using their medications to create scarcity, a really important tactic that helps me sell policies that a lot of people probably wouldn't be able to sell because you allow them to understand that you're the medical expert. Look at the bottom left there. Your product expert, which knows other products on the market. When you know what Colonial Pen has to offer, when you know what Gerber has to offer, when you know what Mutual Omaha has to offer, when you understand when someone says, hey, I am taking um, a medication like an albuterol and a nebulizer and I'm on oxygen that I can only go to a specific company and it's going to be the best product for them and they can feel that you're convicted and that you know what you're talking about your product, you will bring value. Secondly, here's what I want to share with you. Um, you want to sell products that are going to be suited for the medical condition. Okay, John. So let me explain with you in a, in a nutshell here. So here's how I would sell it. So also, they're the only company, John, with your medical condition, COPD and cancer, that would even be able to insure you. This is really just your only option at getting coverage in place with that cancer. Does that make sense? So level of scarcity, people want things that they can't get. When you go ahead and implement scarcity, this is exactly how you create a sales, you know, little influence, how to take and influence people to go ahead and understand that this is not a product that anybody can get, that there is some type of barrier to entry. And ultimately it is going to be valuable for them. Scarcity does create value. Um, third thing now pitching the options. So let's say we're going to go to a company. Now it's time to share with you how I pitch these options. Very, very important. So I present these products. I'll have my insurance toolkits up. You have three options. So now they have three option options that they've recommended for you. They have a starter $7,000 option, a $10,000 option, and a $15,000 option. And John, you can always go up or down based off your budget and your needs. Okay. Now, the way that you present products is that you want to go ahead and act like we're a team, that you have their back. When I'm saying that we have three products together that we're going to find something affordable, we're going to find something that's best for you. You want to grab their hand, you know, I guess emotionally and let them know that you are here for them. So, John, I'm going to be here for, we're going to find something together that's going to fit the budget, that's going to be comfortable for you and ultimately give you the peace of mind that we want. Again, you are here to help them make a decision and the more warmth that you can make them feel and ultimately feel that this is their decision and not yours as a sales individual who they know is going to be receiving commission off this deal, will go ahead and help them make a better decision and want them to move forward. Really simple, logical answer to how... Um, humans think ultimately, if you know that they're going to be selling something, they know that you're making money. So you don't want to act like that. You want to ultimately let them know, Hey, we're working together here. It's me and you, you know, I'd like to think, Hey, we're, we're, we're in a car together. We're going to do this thing together. Let's, I got your back. So now the most important part is how to actually pitch this. And it's very simple. You want to pitch the product first by its package. You want to pitch the solution and the cost of the solution. One of the biggest mistakes that people do when it comes down to selling is they don't explain what it's going to do and ultimately how it's gonna solve their problem and what is the cost of the solution. So here's how you do it. The first you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and create or label what the package is. For example, you wanna pitch the cheapest option first. What I do is I go ahead and label the cheapest option, the $10,000 option. Let's say we're going ahead and doing a formal burial. That $10,000 option is gonna be that starter program. Now the starter program for those or those is, is, is with those for who are on a fixed income and those who want to just have a little something to make sure that they have all their burial expenses taken care of. Now, the $10,000 option, so basically the first line there, the beginner is the header, is that it's labeling as a starter package. Now, the second line there is what is this starter package going to do for you? What type of peace of mind? What type of solution is it going to solve? Is it going to help me make sure that little Johnny is taken care of? Is it going to help your client solve this problem that they've been thinking about? Now, the $10,000 option will do everything that you need to cover all your basic burial expenses, but it just won't be everything that you really need to leave any extra money behind to Jimmy. But basically, you can go to bed at night knowing that God forbid something were to happen to you, Jimmy will not be burdened. Now, this is how they make it affordable for everyone on a fixed income. And you're going to go ahead and explain the cost of the solution. The $10,000 option, if you can even get approved or even get qualified, is going to be $63 per month. Now, the reason I share this with you guys, it's very important, is that a lot of people just explain that, hey, uh, here's the $10,000 option. It's $43. The middle option uh, is you know, $15,000. It's $110. The third option is $20,000, and it's going to be uh, $157. Whatever the price is, that is not the right way to pitch it. Same thing with the second option. You're going to go ahead and pitch the package. The middle option here is the 15000 is the most 
common pot program that we have for seniors on a fixed income and that we help typically go with. That $15,000 program will leave about one to $2,000 left over. Again, solution. And then now if you can get qualified, that $15,000 will be um, $72 per month, okay? Now, the last option is the most expensive option. Now, really interesting here. I always discourage the third option. The last option is the $20,000 option. Now, I personally don't recommend this for you. I want to stop you there. How many salespeople will ever prevent you from buying the most expensive thing? Not many, because they know that there's more commission involved. But when you discourage someone to buy the most important or the most expensive object, guess what? It builds credibility, builds trust, and ultimately they're like, huh, this person might actually have my back. Now, the last option is the $20,000 option. Now, I personally really wouldn't recommend this for you. It's going to be a bit more expensive or a bit more than you actually need, but um, it's going to be actually, you know, it's going to cover all those barrel expenses and leave about five to ten thousand dollars left over. But ultimately, I'm going to discourage you. I don't think you need this, you know, option. This uh, twenty thousand dollar option will be one hundred and sixty two dollars uh, per month. Okay, so that's exactly how I pitch it: package, solution, and cost of solution. Very simple there. Now the close is what you want to go ahead. Ultimately, you've done the work. Now it's helping them make a decision. So how I do that is. Um, now, John, so our biggest challenge here is actually see if you can qualify, but kind of fill me in, label them as a father, mother, grandma, husband, or cousin. Do you think that you know, the first option, the 5,000 or the second option would give you the most peace of mind? This is what you guys sell. You don't sell life insurance. You don't sell burial insurance. You sell peace of mind. The client will then pick the $10,000 option. And then you go ahead and move them into the application with a double confirmation. Okay, do you think that $10,000 for $62 is nice and comfortable and affordable for you every month? They say yes, and you have just closed the client. Now, the goal of sales is to get a clear buying decision from your prospect. Number one is to get your client to make a clear buying decision. Now, if they don't do that, then you get objections. And here's how to handle objections. Now, especially when you're closing. Now, this is, means that they have something that they're missing. When you got an objection here at the bottom, and they've explained to you that they need the product. There is something that is holding them back on why they're making the decision or not moving forward with the decision. Remember, they have just shared with you why they need this product. They have just shared with you, again, all the ammunition that you need, um, what it looks like, how bad it will be for their family. So you as the agent are now confused. I'm curious. Oh, my gosh, John, what do, what do you mean? Huh. You said that you really needed this to protect your family. Like you are genuinely curious because you're like, you just explained to me why you need this product. What is holding you back? And here's typically what is holding individuals back. There's three main objections that you're going to get when you're selling final expense over the phone. Number one is money. It's too expensive. I can't afford it. Or it's some type of situation. I want to go ahead and you'll, you'll see here, which means that they don't value the coverage enough. Or third, they're scared of making a decision. They fear the decision. Maybe their lifestyle will change. Maybe they're going to get a negative outcome after purchasing it. Or they lack information. Or I like to say in objection language, I need to think about it. It's really a money problem. I need to talk to my wife. Some type of situation that's holding them back. Or number one, or number three, I want to, you know, I want to go over everything before I make a decision. They're making, they're scared about making a decision, and the reason they're scared of making a decision is because you need to now peel back the onion. Is because they they feel like you didn't give them enough information, and the way that you do this is peel back that onion. This onion is now coming back into force. And when someone says that I need to think about it or I need to speak to my wife or I'm not sure, whatever baloney they want to throw at your way, you need to be curious. And the way that you answer this or the way that you handle this objection is when you say, John, that you need to think about it with your wife, what do you mean by that? John, when you say that you're not sure, what do you mean by that? When you say I need to think about it, what do you mean by that? You are trying to peel back that onion, understanding what the root causes of why they are not making a decision. Now, you just need to have a conversation. Everyone says, is there some special formula that you need to make when you're selling final expense and getting objections? What objection do I need? What magical thing do I need to say? You don't need to have anything magical up your sleeve. You need to, literally just need to have a conversation with this client about why are they not making a decision? What is going on in their wor real world? And really, what is the biggest problem that they're experiencing on if they did make the decision? You have to go ahead and reassure them about why it's good to make a decision, but ultimately help them understand what's preventing them from making a decision in a logical manner. And the way that you do this is when you explain, John, when you say that you need to speak to your wife, what do you mean by that? They're going to give you typically two responses. Number one, it's the price. And the way they're going to say it is, I just need to think about it, or I need to think about it. Or I'm not really sure. If, you, if I'm not really sure. And the way that you handle this is just two things. Number number one, John, are you just, you know, is it just too expensive? Is it is it the price, John? Or are you just not sure if you need it? What's, what's really holding you back? You're just talking them through it. 
what's really holding you back? John is then going to give you some type of answer. And just to sum it up in the simplest way that I could come up with of how to handle any buying objection is simply this. Number one, ask a question. John, what are you most concerned about? John, if you went ahead and move forward today, what are you worried about? There's so many questions that you can ask that is, there's no script that's going to tell you. John, if you didn't make the decision, what would, what are you most worried about? John, are you scared that you don't have the money to pay for this today? John, whatever the question is, ask the question. John's going to give you an answer. You go ahead and dive deeper. John, when you say that you like want to speak to your wife, um, do you think she'd be mad at you? Ask the question. Ah, oh, she probably wouldn't. So John, dive deeper. You know, I guess what would be holding you back? Like, what are your biggest concerns? You dive deeper and explain what are their concerns. And then you ultimately present them that solution again, which is you think the 10,000 or the 7,000 will be the solution or the, the, the ability to solve their, their problem. And if they don't go ahead and move forward and pick the option, you go ahead and loop them back and repeat, ask the question, dive deeper. When you say that your wife wants you to be there to make the decision, you know, you know, why would that be important? When you say that you need to look at other options, what do you mean by that? Or when you say that you don't know if I'm giving you the best pro like best solution to your problem or the best price, what do you mean by that? Explain away the concerns, present the solution again, and then repeat an objection handle. If you don't make a decision after three times, I like to go ahead and move on to the next buyer. Now, the ultimate goal, the break it down, if you had to say, Peter, what is objection handling? What have you learned about objection handling? And how can you become a master of objection handling? It is just getting down to the root. What is preventing this prospect from buying? They have a clear problem. Why are they not buying from you? You have to be accountable as the agent, understand that you did something wrong. <clears throat> and the way that you realize this is that number one, people are not going to simply share with you that they don't have the money. A man or woman's ego is not going to be like, hey, I'm not you know, moving forward because I don't have the money in my bank account. A man or woman's ego is not going to say, hey, let's talk about this next week because uh, my wife or my husband actually wears the pants in a relationship. They're not going to do that. And the way that you do this is you, buy, get, you get deeper and deeper and deeper to help them feel comfortable by making a decision by asking questions diving deeper, reassuring or explaining away their concerns, and then presenting them solution. And then lastly, asking them to see if they want to go ahead and move forward. Ultimately, this is your goal as a sales individual. And ultimately, that's how you win at sales. At the end of the day, if you do all things step to finish, this is how you sell clients. And this is how you make more money. And this is the exact frameworks, question frameworks, solutions, and problems that I present to my problem, that prospects that has helped me sell hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of life insurance policies. And now you have the access to Ultimately, if you guys want to know how to get the free script, just go ahead and message me on Instagram. Say, hey, I watched your video. Can I please, please have access to the script? I'll send you a link. And, and ultimately, I have nothing to sell you. This course is completely free. I respect your time. And ultimately, guys, I hope you invested this hour. And this hour gave you more than you could ever ask for. And ultimately, I hope this gave you a greater return on your time. And more importantly, helps you become a successful agent. I want you guys to win. I want you guys to make more money. And I just want to share with you the lessons and things that I've learned that helped me become a su successful agent that has changed my life hopefully help change your life. I love you guys and ultimately want you to bring the channel, be the person that provides you the most amount of value and to help you win at sales. I love you guys and I hope this provides you an ample amount of return on your time. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Cheers.